Yeah, they got over the line against the Adelaide Crows, the Blues, but only just thanks to that Jordan Russell winner. Welcome back to One Week at a Time. Uh, before we uh, speak to our next special guest, I've got a question for Robert Walls. Now, of all the Carlton matches I've called with you over the years, and there's been many, I've never known you to be harder on anyone that's played in the navy blue than our guest tonight, Jared Waite. Oh, Welcome, for... Jared. <laughs> Why are you so hard on him? Thanks for the warning. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to come with that. Um, I'm hard on Jared because uh, I just reckon he can be so good, and I want him to be so good, and I'm really glad that Carlton is playing him as a key forward, and I hope they I hope he plays there for the rest of his career because I just reckon he's filled holes here, there, everywhere, all over the field. And I reckon he needs to be given responsibility to play an important role in that team because I think he can do it. So that's why I've been hard on him. It was a bit do awkward. Think, do, you know, do you know he's here? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. Do you think he's, you think he's yeah. hard on you? Too no, hard on I, I think Robert's 100% correct. Um, probably, yeah, I have been used as a bit of a fill the, hole, fill the holes. But, um, yeah, I'm really happy with the way the club's going at the moment. More key role down forward. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying every second of it. Probably picking up Wolsey's point, I, I tend to agree with him a bit. I, I reckon if you get it all right, you can be in the best 20 players in the competition. Do, do you feel that yourself? Do you feel as though your best is almost as good as anyone else's? Uh, yeah, obviously um, I have confidence in myself. Um, always erred on the side of our negativity with my game and it's probably cost me. So I'm just trying to be positive and, and if I do like play at my best, I know that it'll help the team. Time. You've got to use your big chance. Well, <laughs> you've thrown him. <laughs> you must be excited playing alongside players like Jeff Garlett, Eddie Betts, who's been under a bit of criticism, but I reckon they've got to keep Eddie there. Yep. Um, and I think Henderson's going to improve and become a better player. And obviously it's a new look Carlton forward line with Brendan Favola no longer there. And for a decade, so much ball went to Fev. Yep. So you guys have got a chance to stamp your own authority on that footy team. And I think that's really exciting for you. Yeah, and, and we, we look forward to the challenge every week and just showing that um, that we we can don't need one player to kick all our goals and I suppose Jeffy's popped up a few times this year kicking three or four and uh, yeah and, and Eddie had a good game on the weekend but even Walks has been really good. Yeah, he's been um, terrific hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, so he had a bit of play with sub last week and, but when he come on he was Plenty of vibrancy and urgency, and it was good. What happened? What happened Saturday night? Because you know, got off to a good start, and then uh, Adelaide clawed their way back into the game. And yeah. uh, with five, eight minutes to go, you could have lost it. Yeah, and I think we, Rats at half time said we probably took the foot off the accelerator a little bit. But um, yeah, we missed a lot of opportunities in the second quarter. I think we kicked two goals, seven or something like that, and which puts a lot of pressure. And Adelaide, being the good team that they are, they will come back and made it into a real dogfight towards the end. And, and we we're lucky enough to come away with the points. Speaking of being sub, you're the first player ever to come off under the concussion rule. You look pretty good only a few minutes later. What were the medical staff saying? Were you a bit frustrated that you'd been subbed off? I was actually, um, I was actually in a fair bit of pain. Actually, um, I can't really remember much of the uh, second half of the game, and and we're still pretty crook the next couple of days. Um, so yeah, look, the doc. We spend that much time with the doc. I spend a fair bit of time with him, and. Um, yeah, he knows every player, and we do all the testing. You managed to carry Heathrow. Yeah, I can't actually remember that. Really? really? Like, it's very vague, and looking back, probably shouldn't have done it. But, yeah, that's why the rules are in place, so so the player doesn't think he's right to go back on. Because I would have gone back on, and any player will go back on. Mm. But that's why the doc's there and protect us. Well, there you go. We all thought he was pretty spot on, didn't we? Mm. Uh, something else that happened in that game, which a few of us thought you might have been a little bit lucky to get away with, was the, the back heel on uh, Luke McGuire. What, what was going through your mind here? Did you I don't think it could have worked out any worse as it did. Um, yeah, he was pushing me in the back, and I just overemphasised the thing, and it looks absolutely terrible. And, yeah, just just probably down point in my career and lucky I yeah. didn't get weeks and there was no contact which which probably saved me and I think having priors it would have been a good little rest I think I would so, have so you, were, you weren't very proud of that nah, no no not at all why would you be did the yeah. club uh, talk to you about that because last year you got uh, reported three times yeah and the club's rats come up to me and pretty much said if you if you're out like you've cost the team and and I knew that and um yeah, I was. I'm probably very fortunate that that didn't follow through. What about the uh, the, the intra club game early in the year when uh, Paul <laughs> Bauer? Have it here, boys. <laughs> oh well, we might as well get them all out of the way. He, he, he got into uh, to Hampson, and uh, you weren't happy with it. And fair enough, he was lucky he didn't hurt his teammate, and like got a bit willing well. between. Yeah, he and I just, I'm really funny about that when, especially in the intra club, like there's no need, like and it's a wet day. He had his head over the ball and. 
and yeah, I'll, I'll stick up for my mate any time and probably went on a little bit longer than what it should have. But um, yeah, a bit of hostility. It was the first game back and <laughs> first or second game back. So You see the coach loves it. I reckon it's fantastic. Some of the best fights we've ever seen have been in uh, intra-club yeah, uh, matches. Because you, uh, you care so much. No problem with me uh, from that. I want to ask you about, you've got Chris Judd at your club, who's an absolute fanatic and yeah. attention to detail, prepares better than maybe anyone who's ever played the game. How would you relate your attitude to footy compared to some of them? Do you, are you as fanatical about the game as he is or are you a bit more laid back? Um, I'm definitely more laid back. Um, I think the one thing that I took out of when Chris Judd come is he come in injured and just did everything. He's all his rehab, 100%. And I sort of tried to, yeah, sort of copy that in my re recovery last year. And um, I think it probably helped me more than anything. And have probably tried to take a bit more of his, like, you've got to learn from blokes. He's won two brown lows. If you don't try and learn something from him, there's obviously something wrong with you. Jared, uh, your coach, Brett Ratton, it's pretty much uh, recognised in the footy world that unless Carlton win a final, he, he'll probably lose his job. Uh, well, that's not for you to discuss. But I heard Brett discussing on radio a week ago that the players actually rate his performance. And he spoke about a couple of midfield players in, in Gibbs and Murphy giving feedback to the coach on his performance. Um, I haven't known that before. Is that something that's been done for a while? Yeah, we've got uh, Ray McLean comes in with leading teams and, and we, we go through a view, review of the game and, and it's not just the players. We don't just, players don't review players, re, players review the coaches. And like, yeah, it's, it's no different to any other player, like getting up there and saying what he's doing wrong and doing right. And uh, yeah, we, we got, we uh, had, yeah, said, the boys said to our rats, like what we thought was doing well and, and what we think, think we need to work on. Can and you he, tell us what you suggested he might need to work on? Um, I think some of the boys are getting a bit worried. He was a bit, getting a bit fanatical on the, on the bench, just to show him a bit too much emotion when the boys are coming off and just, so he takes it on board and, and he's been really good with it. That's good. Uh, we're going to have a look at some vision now. Would you, I think you, you agree, Rob, that the, at the moment you're a bit undersized down back. Yep. And as we look at some vision on the weekend, um, you know, Laidler and White, a little bit out-muscled against the Crows. When Matthew Cruiser comes back, do you think he could be capable of playing in defence? I, I don't think he will. I think he'll, he'll play ruck and forward. Big Cruz, he hasn't spent a whole lot of uh, time in defence. Is this but, um, a problem, Robert? Uh, it was a problem for the Blues on Saturday night, and uh, and I thought at some point they might move Jared back. I'm glad they didn't because I think they had to work their way through it. Now the Crows had three big f forwards. You know, there was McKernan and Tippett and and Taylor Walker, and the Blues really only had one big defender. That was Jamison. So Laidler and Simon White got caught out a little bit, got exposed for size and height. That's not going to happen every week. But the Carlton back line, I, I reckon the Carlton back line's been your weakness and uh, Yaron's certainly given you a fantastic run out of there. Laidler's you know, fresh into the club. Yeah. digan has been really good. I think yeah, he's been good. terrific yeah. and, and I think Jamison's starting to blossom too and not just a, a negator but he's also becoming more attacking. Yeah and that's one thing Jamo had to work on. He's a very good like one-on-one -on -one defender and, and always beats his opponent but didn't quite get on the, um, the having the ball on the side of it and but he's really worked on that game but yeah we are a bit, bit weak like a bit Lack for height, I suppose. But um, Simon White's very strong, and um, they got a fair bit of delivery in there with a bit of space, so boys couldn't really come off and support. But yeah, we, something we can work on. Tell us about life after Fev at Carlton. He, he's obviously gone to Brisbane, and now he's, he's out of the system. And we were aware of the extent of his issues. I mean, the gambling problems, he had the you know, mental health issues, he's discussed, he's had um, you know, issues with uh, attention deficit disorder. And what sort of drain was that on the group? You've got someone who's, who's a complex person, who's obviously got a lot going in their personal life. Yeah. You look back now and think, geez, we spent a lot of time dealing with Feb and maybe that was taking away from where we're going as a group? No, I think, I think with footy clubs is you can sort of, you can put on a persona when you're there at the club. You can be all vibrant and happy and, and then it's when, you're closed, uh, when you're behind closed doors, I suppose that's when it comes out. But I suppose... Uh, like yeah, everyone who's friends with Fev sort of needs to support him in that, and and he's he's trying to get his life back on track, and and I hope all the best. Did you for know him. how bad his life was? No, I didn't, and I don't think anyone did. Like I said, like mm. he, he was always very vibrant at the club, and and was always mucking around, and then but it's when you sort of when you're not at the club and you don't see him, that's probably when it was worse. Do you have a lot of downtime away from the club, and, and what do you do in that time? Um, we don't have as much as we used to, Robert. Um, we probably do have a lot more meetings and and a lot more emphasis on recovery and treatment. So I suppose as, as the game each year gets more professional, you sort of get less and less time just to sort of 
be uh, yeah, just doing downtime. So I suppose I don't I don't really get a chance to do much uh, these days. But um, yeah, it's, it's hard for the young boys, I think, too. Jared, uh, I'm not sure how many years ago, but you better tell me. Your, your father passed away, and he, he was a Carlton uh, champion and played yeah. a lot with, with Robert. And I think you played the next day from memory. I remember sitting home as a player and thinking, there's courage in football and there's other forms of courage. And I thought it was one of the most courageous things that I'd ever seen. I thought the way you handled yourself and the dignity and the, the fact that you were actually brave enough to get out there. Can you tell us a, about that day and looking back, you know, how you actually got through a game of footy the day after your, your dad passed yeah, away? Yeah, I suppose I've been asked this a bit, little bit, but um, the day's a bit of a blur to me. I just sort of remember not actually doubting it whatsoever and that I wasn't going to play and yeah it's just one of those days where I sort of remember parts of it I remember the boys being very good and I remember Andrew McKay sort of coming up and giving me a pat on the back and stuff like that so that side of it but but at the end of the game it was, it was very um, I suppose emotional sort of saw the family and broke down so I suppose I held it together for a little bit but then probably lost it How long it. ago was it? Uh, five, five, six years I think so it goes quick and I suppose it's like anything, it's, yeah, you sort of reflect on those games, but um, yeah, it's a tough day. With the Carlton's opponents on the weekend, Adelaide Crows, where, where does it put them now? The Crows, well, you just don't really know because mm. uh, they're hot and cold. You know, they, they started the season off with a win over Hawthorne, lost to Port Adelaide when they were well and truly up, played probably a, a good half of football against Carlton. It's a very much a new team, a lot of young players in it, and uh, I think Neil Craig thinks that you yeah. know, that's an exciting future, going by his comments after the game. But I tip them to be top eight this year. I'm not as confident after seeing what they've done in the first month. Well, you're right, Neil Craig, the coach is very confident about their list. Here's what he had to say after the game. It's, it's the most exciting group I think this club's ever had. And I can just I can just see this group, this group of players, guys, doing great things. I, I really mean that. It's going to take some time. Um, but to come back against Carlton, for example, to come, to come back against Carlton tonight, who I think are in really good shape, and Brett's doing a great job with them. Um, they've played some really uh, top-level teams this year and done really well. Um, I, th I thought our guys were really good. Their attitude to wanting to play big time footy is, is, is as good as I've seen for a young group. They, are, they have a very clear vision of where they want to go. They are absolute joy to coach. They are, they are a fantastic group to coach. Because we've had some outstanding personnel in our footy club over the journey of 20 years. Um, and I haven't been there obviously for the full 20 years, but um, I, I, I really enjoy this group. They're, they're going to do some really good things. I love the fact he's brutally honest, but saying that you know, they've got the best list potentially of all time, it's a big call, isn't it, when you look yeah. back on that, the late, 80, uh, late 90s, and McLeod, Goodwin, Rusciuto, Edwards, Bickley, so it's a... Yeah, it's, it's an interesting statement because I don't think uh, Neil Craig you know, makes big statements, but uh, I think he's pretty measured there, and he obviously feels that there's a lot of good talent coming through. There's none better than Patrick Dangerfield, mm. who is the, is the player of today, someone who can break lines and, and push forward, and uh, if they've got half a dozen of those coming through they will be in good shape and just a nice touch from Neil Craig he went before the game just plucked a kid out of the crowd obviously in Adelaide Crow support this is wonderful stuff we believe it was just a random kid that he saw a Crow supporter had come across and made the journey took him out to the centre of the ground decided to give him uh, an experience that young boy will never forget that for the rest of his Into life the took rooms. him through the rooms and I reckon Neil Craig is one of the great people in football he is honest he said uh, on record that once my time's up at Adelaide that'll be it for me uh, and I think uh, he's very uh, you know, unselfish and really humble individual. Yeah. Jared, did you go in the rooms with your dad? Like uh, he coached uh, when he left Carlton, he went to uh, Latrobe in yeah. Tasmania. Yeah, I was pretty young at the time. I think it, he finished up when I was about eight or nine. But I sort of remember running around as a little tacker in, in uh, Glen Gary Footy Club. Mum used to have to take a couple of pairs of clothes because I'd get a bit dirty and that. But um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that you just love being around footy clubs when you're a young kid. And, and I suppose that's why you play football. A uh, break on one week at a time. Jack Revolt took a number of very good marks uh, in the game against the Kangaroos. And that's the beauty of playing modern football, Rob. You can check out your speckies on television. Well, who do you reckon he's learnt this from? Oh, I've got a fair guess. <laughs> Richo man.
Gary O'Brien in the rooms after the game, just uh, going across to Mick Moldhouse and his daughter Christy and the grandkids. Now, I'm not sure whether this is a, a, a really a great move or a smart move. Now, Wolsey, uh, would anyone have been brave enough to, um, <laughs> to go I'm with your <laughs> daughter or anyone that would have been happy to come up to you? And... Uh, you've got to be careful if you suck up to the coach. Let me tell you, Luke, I, I coached at four clubs. At Brisbane, there was one player who dated my daughter. That's the bravest thing anyone's ever done, I think. <laughs> it wasn't a good career move for him, let me tell you. Did you sack him? Uh, he didn't play many games. <laughs> well, he turns up at the front of the house and bips the horn. Oh, no. So you've got to be better than that. Can we yeah. name names or not? No, we won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the game plan is on at a special time on Thursday at half past seven with uh, Hutto, Matthew Lloyd, Scott Cummings and uh, Cameron Ling is our special guest just before the uh, West Coast Melbourne game over at Subiaco, which we'll, you'll see on 1 and 10. Uh, congratulations, by the way, you're getting engaged. You have got, got engaged. engaged. Yeah, yeah, engaged a couple, uh, couple of months ago now, so it's all wedding plans are in order, not that I know much about it. You're getting married in Bali. Yeah, yeah, getting over there, so take the family over there and uh, yeah, it'd be good fun. Fantastic. Any tips? Uh, Engaged man? No, no, no. Look, uh, look uh, Jared's dad, Vinny, terrific. Um, good family man, and uh, I'm sure this fella will be the same. And every time I see you play, I think you're dad, and he'd be mighty proud of you, let me tell you. Thanks, Robert. Some hard questions for Robert Walls. Did the Saints do enough to convince you they're back on track? No. Is Jack Revolt a better kick than his cousin Nick? Absolutely. Is he a better mark than his cousin Nick? He is a better mark. Is he a better player than his cousin Nick? No. Maybe will be, but we'll have to wait and see. He's got to uh, pass the test of time. Can the Tigers make the eight? I don't think so, but uh, they're on the right track. Do you now be kinder to Jared Waite now you've met him here? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> and thanks for setting me up. That's all right. right. That's just my, doing my job. Your hero of the week? My hero of the week is the Gold Coast Suns. I, I thought it was fantastic that uh, you know they had the win, uh, all those young players, and led by the senior boys, and I think the whole footy world is really happy for them. So they're my heroes. And your villain? The villain, well, they're opponents, because uh, I think Port Adelaide have to be really careful as to where they're going, because uh, there's some signs to me that they are the most amateurish club in the AFL. They won a flag not long ago. Uh, well, that's, you know, that's history. It's uh, where you are now, quarters, that counts. Fair enough. And you've got Sydney on the weekend? Yeah, Friday night up there. So Big game, isn't it? The Swans mm. and Carlton. Coming off the break, so yeah, good challenge for us. They got us in the final last year, so yeah, after a bit of redemption. At the SCG? Yes, yeah. Yep. Uh, have you played at the SCG? Yeah, played a couple of times. Uh, last time we played there was two years ago, I think. So, but um, yeah, it's a bit smaller, smaller ground and a bit more con contested. Thanks, mate, for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, Rob. Thanks, we'll see you next week, one week at a time. See you then.